instead of three. Off the run, off the run. 55, come on, guys, 55. Now Newton on first down. Gets this into the hands of Nikhil Harry. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. 13 yards on the game's opening play. You can see the time and effort and thought that they put into their passing game because it was evident right there. It looks like a simple pitch and catch, but you and I both know that they have planned for this and worked hard to make it happen. Now this one to his tight end out on the right side. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. A good pickup there, eight yards on the first down completion. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made a nice easy pitch and catch. Hoping he can break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. Facing a second and two after that last catch, good for eight yards. They'll run for the first time now with James White. And he'll get it down to the 47 here. Seven yards there and a first down. Not too many more ideal situations at second and two in order to try and pick up a first down. They ran it and picked it up. So now first and ten as they've crossed into Miami territory at the 47. They'll run for the first time with Sony Michelle. And that play goes nowhere. Taken down, losing yardage at the 50, right at midfield. That was well played there defensively. Two tight ends in the formation, which essentially gave them seven blockers up front. Hard to imagine with all that size and beef that they could let a tackler through. But that's exactly what happened. A loss resulted. From the 50, Newton. And he's going to have the hook up here with Harry. A gain of 13. It's a first down. First, that was a nicely run slam route. And what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps and cuts towards the middle of the field. And now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and get the quarterback a really nice target. Now this one to his running back out of the backfield. He'll be brought down on the 30-yard line after a gain of six. A six -yard I don't think it's a surprise they're throwing the football early. We expected that. They told us they were going to come out firing, but four for four on the opening drive. They like that. <laughs> they don't just like it. They love it because now everyone gets locked in. Your confidence jumps up. Everyone's easy about what they're doing out there. And by the way, they're looking at the sideline thinking to themselves and expressing, let's keep throwing it. We're doing pretty well. And he's got another first down as he's brought down at the Dolphins' 13-yard line. First and 10. And the pocket's been protected pretty good here so far on the opening drive. We always talk about confidence in runners and catchers and quarterbacks. How about the protection detail? They're not allowing anyone near the guy throwing the football. First down, here's White. And he'll fight his way down right around the 12. The ball carrier. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. A one-yard gain could look like a disaster, but it all depends on how the game is going. Is it a series of one-yard gains running the ball? If that's the case, you might have to start thinking about throwing it a little bit more. But if it's just the occasional one-yard run, hey, congratulations to the defense. They won that one. Come back and get them the next time. This will be caught at about the five. And the stop will come inside the five at the four. The reception good for seven. It's third down. When you execute a drag or a crossing route really well and give them a chance to let it develop a little bit, you can gain some significant yardage hitting your tight end on that one. This will be play number nine coming up on this relatively long opening drive as they look to convert on third down. To the end zone, but it's incomplete. That was a touchdown if he could have hung on. Instead, it was a well-timed collision to jar that one free. And on their first drive, the offense staying out there. They're going to go for it on fourth. Here we go with Michelle. And he will have the first down before he's brought down at the three. 
They only got a couple, but a couple's all that they needed as they convert on fourth. Deep in the red zone, seemed like they had their mind made up that that was four down territory, and now they've got it inside the five. I like the way you looked at that because you're thinking just like a play caller and a head coach who gave the play caller that authority. It was four down territory. They went for it, picked it up. They didn't get the touchdown, but what a great consolation prize. A new set of downs and another shot at the end zone. It'll be a loss of one, and it'll be second and goal. On the ground, this is Michelle, and he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. It'll be a loss of a couple on the play, so now third down coming up. We all know how much running backs love getting the ball down near the goal line. They think they're going to find a way into the end zone. He hasn't had that kind of luck so far. Ends up not getting in on the last two carries. You know he's going to be upset about a missed opportunity. Eluding the pressure right. He opted to go with a scramble, gets two yards, and now it's fourth. Well, partner, nothing comes open here, so he decides to escape out of there, and he doesn't pick up a first down, but he does gain additional yardage to set up a possible field goal attempt if they decide to go that route. Here's Nick Folk now on for the field goal. From the right hash here, should be an easy one. And the 12-year veteran knocks it right through. And the Patriots jump out to a 3-0 lead. Well, that will go down as a 15-play drive, and it results in three points. So some disappointment. It's funny. We had our conference before the game with the offensive coordinator. What did he tell us? I just want every drive to end in a kick, right? An extra point, a punt, or a field goal. Well, in this case, I think it is a little bit of a disappointment because it did end in a kick, but that type of a drive should end in the end zone. Now, after the field goal, Bailey will kick it away. Jakeem Grant now to return. And out a little across the 25 to the 27. Miami set to take over. This one a little slow to get cooking. Just a 3-0 scoreline as they begin with a first and 10. Six yards here as he stopped near the 35 at the 34. Well, I think after that run, the defense getting back in the huddle and looking at each other and maybe starting to question their confidence a bit. They gave up a significant run, six yards, and now you're saying to yourself, how do we stop them, and do I have enough confidence to make a play? Tua wants to throw it on second down. This taken in by Jakeem Grant. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. 19 yards there on the catch and run. And the slam route's effective no matter who's running the route and catching the ball. But when you have a receiver of that stature, you have to be a little bit more precise throwing it. You don't have the same catch radius with the bigger targets. On first down, Tonga Vailoa steps away to his left. And he'll be taken down at the 44-yard line. He'll get three yards on the scramble there at second down. Yeah, he only gets a few yards on first and 10, but he's better off doing that than throwing an incompletion or even worse, an interception. Coming up on second and seven. Here's Tua. Oh, the ball comes out on the hit, but they'll say it's incomplete. But well, we always talk about how you've got to be quick when you go through your progressions, and here's another prime example. Trying to look downfield, he was standing in the pocket, but just couldn't find anyone open, could he? No, not enough time. They hit him and forced that incompletion. And the line to gain here is the 37 on third down. 
Tug of Iloa working out of the gun. Into heavy traffic, and it's intercepted. Picked up by Jonathan Jones. And he'll return this ball across midfield to the 47-yard line. Intercepted. Now following the interception, here's Newton. He completes it right side to White. And he'll go down inside the 45 before going out of bounds. They'll contain him to just four. Second down. It's now second and six. Out of the gun, Newton. Slant route, caught by Edelman. And here he'll be brought down a little shy of the 35 at the 36. Seven yards there and a first down. The former seventh-round pick, Julian Edelman, just continues to have such a productive career. And has made himself into a receiver. Remember, he was a college quarterback, and not just a productive one, a very good one. At Kent State, right? Yes, a great leader, a guy who could make plays with his feet and his arm. Got to the NFL and had to convert into being a receiver and was drafted that way. And that conversion, <laughs> oh boy, it's been good. So from the 36 now, first and 10. 51, Mike. Mike 51. From the gun, here's Newton. He'll drop it underneath to White. And down right around the 32-yard line, four yards on the pickup. They'll contain him to just four, second down. Second and six at the 32-yard line. To the air again, Newton. Into heavy traffic, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Jerome Baker, and his crew will take over with a football at the 35-yard line. At their own 35-yard line. After the turnover, it's Tua. Complete to the running back, Matt Breda. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. Nice way to start the drive, a gain of 12 and a first down. That's a pretty play there coming out of the backfield. But as that back, you've got to be conscious of making sure you're securing the football. When you get out in open field, sometimes you get a little loose with it as you're trying to get up ahead of steam. Make sure you keep it close to your body because those defenders are trying to punch it free. He does a nice job there protecting the ball and picking up a first down. Jonathan Jones that time, the one who got a hand in, knocked it away. That was well played, but that was also an example of a corner who understands his coverage, realized he had support behind him, and could be a little more aggressive in the shorter zone, and did exactly that, knocking that pass away. Now thrown to Parker, complete on the slant. Now the Dolphins going to burn the first of their timeouts as the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half. A second down completion got him seven. Now here's third and three. Again, they will throw it with Tungabailoa. And it's caught by Parker. And he is going to have the Dolphins first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Could we get a touchdown in this first half after all? It's first and ten. And again, it's Tug of Iloa. And that'll be knocked away. It's incomplete. Jonathan Jones that time, the one who got a hand in, knocked it away. So many times when we talk about coverage, we're just talking about a defender running with a receiver. But a big part of it is understanding where the football is, finding it. In this case, when it arrived, it wasn't a surprise, and he was able to bat it away. To a once again here on second and ten. Oh, and a bad throw there. It's intercepted. Devin McCourty picks it off. And he's able to take this one back to the 36-yard line. Very good starting position for the Patriot offense as they come up first and ten at their 36-yard line. 
The Dolphins get there this time, and they bring him down. Christian Wilkins, he's the one that got home and takes him down for a loss of nine. And we say it all the time, have to be able to get rid of the ball sooner than that. You have to help your offensive line out. They're going to protect you as best they can. And if you're getting three to five seconds to throw the ball, they're doing a really nice job. But when you hold it and give up a sack, you're really almost discrediting their work. And he's going to get forward for about five, but that may be coming back. What say you, Mr. Referee? So we've reached halftime. All we have to show for the first half, a lone field goal. 3 nothing. our score. As we'll get you down the coast to Orlando for Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach, thank you, sir. A field goal separates these two teams as we come back for this second half. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. Out comes the Dolphins now. They'll go on offense first here in this third quarter. To this point, the results have not been good. Two possessions, two turnovers. And that's obviously something that can't continue, but to go a little bit deeper on that one, I would think about some play calls now, not even necessarily to my best player, but to someone I can trust with the ball, try and get things settled down a little bit. Now the Georgia Southern man, it's Matt Breda. And able to stay on his feet past the 30 to about the 33-yard line. Lawrence Guy able to bring him down. Well, they did throw interceptions on their last two drives, so no surprise at all they decided to start it with a running play. I'm actually a little bit surprised, though, that they got as much out of it as they did. Yeah, decent little gain. Puts them in a pretty good spot for second down. On second down, Tua brought in over the middle by Graham. And he'll bring it up here to right at the 40-yard line. Just his second catch of the game so far. This one moves the chains. I always laugh when people say, what's the toughest route to defend? And I'm like, any of them, especially if it's a good receiver, that makes things very difficult. But when you're running a drag route, something short, shallow, going through defenders, using guys almost as, as screens in order to get open, that makes things tough for guys trying to get to the football. And the play goes nowhere. Losing yardage back near the 40 at the 39. He was unable to shake free there, and they'll cover him for a loss of a yard. Boy, how good has this defense been seemingly all game long? I really think right from the first snap, I think you're really onto something there in this passing game. It just can't get off the ground. And that play, it wound up losing yardage. This is Gaskin on the carry. Room to run past midfield. And all the way down to the 33-yard line. That one covers 29 yards. First down. Outside handoff to the right side. If you're a running back, you love getting the ball early, so you have vision to see what's happening in front of you. Right tackle likes that call. Big play for him. But don't forget about the guys you always tell me on the backside sealing off. When they talk about cutoff blocks, making sure no one can leak from the backside that can run a play down. Yeah, nobody leaked. Big play. Flushed out right. So they were looking to throw, holding on the big right tackle. That's real simple, partner. Keep your hands inside in the chest area. You're probably okay. You get it out on the shoulders, get them wide. You're usually going to pick up a holding call. So following the hold, they're in a bit of a hole here with a first and 20. From the gun, it's Tua toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. He was looking for Matt Breida out of the backfield. That'll bring up second down. And that would off the mark behind him, incomplete. So they'll come up after the incompletion for second down. Play action, now it's Tua. That's complete to his tight end, Mike Kosicki. They'll get nine there as that sets him up better for third down. So much goes into a successful play, doesn't it? How about that play action there? Freezing the defense just enough to spring the tight end free downfield for the completion. An extra corner comes on now for the Patriots. D on third down. Going to the air, Tug of Iloa. To a hit, and the ball is out. And it's picked up by the Patriots. He'll get this one out to the 50 to the midfield stride. Newton and the Patriots with a first and 10 right at the 50-yard line. 
And he'll hand this to Michelle to get things started. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven leaves him with a second and three. And there we saw one of the downsides of blitzing during a rundown because sometimes you get out of your gaps. You don't fit the run quite as well because you're headed towards the ball carrier with abandon. So they'll come up after the gain of seven on a second and three. And it's Michelle once again. And he'll get this down close to a first down at about the Dolphins' 37. Five yards on the play there as the drive will continue. Now that's the way to do it. Hand it to someone with vision and good footwork. And add in a little bit of power. And you find a way to pick up first downs. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. They defer to White out of the shotgun. Takes this to the 32, maybe the 31, and then the defense rallying quickly after that broken tackle. You can see this quite a bit on running plays with the guys out wide. A lot of times, though, it doesn't get caught. You're exactly right, because it's away from the play usually, so a lot of it goes undetected, but I know this will surprise you. I coach some receivers in the offseason. We work a lot on hand placement and blocking downfield. Might want to take that course. Here's Newton. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. And that's one of those plays where it's hard to keep two eyes on the football when you know the contact's coming, let alone getting two hands around it, hugging it to your body, and absorbing the hit, even for those big tight ends who you would think could absorb that contact. Throwing on second and 14. Newton, and that'll be incomplete. Took a pretty good shot as he tried to pull that one in. Couldn't hang on third down. When you run in the slant, timing is everything. And against that man coverage, there was no space available and incompletion as a result. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. A shotgun snap for Newton. Now he'll let it go deep left side. And that will be incomplete. Well, they weren't scared to let it fly, but it falls to the ground and brings up fourth down. Well, you got to think that sooner or later, they're going to hit one of those, but the coverage has been excellent thus far, and it was again on the last play. The Patriots send out their punter, as he should be able to pin him back deep here with his first punt. And now a low liner. I think he mishit it. And no return here. Where will they spot it? The they say just outside the 20-yard line. The Dolphins about set to go to work on offense. And last time, the turnover on the fumble. And they were in enemy territory, so that had to be very frustrating. Down on the scoreboard here, can't do it again. You nailed every part of what was frustrating. <laughs> Down on the scoreboard, had a drive going, had pushed it past the 50-yard line, so they felt they were in striking distance. And to come away with nothing, not a good feeling at all, to put it mildly. Now they can't afford to do that again. Yeah, now can they get that bad taste out of their mouth here? Some of the most unselfish players on any football team, defensive tackles, because we ask them to just eat up blocks and allow other people to make tackles. But when he can make a play himself, as we just saw there, that's a big day. Another run with Gaskin. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. A gain of 13, it's a first down. A gain of 13 yards. First down, Dolphins. That's the end of the third quarter. And that is going to do it for this third quarter of action. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Two are going to throw. He'll get this into the hands of Breida. And he'll be taken down across the 50 at the 45 in enemy territory. 19 yards there on the catch and run. So many times you hear today's NFL described as a space game. Get your best players into space with the football in their hands. That's why sometimes you just swing it out to your runner, get him out in the flat, and let him have a chance to make people miss an open field. Setting to throw on first down is Tua. Got a man over the middle. It's Williams. And past the 35, he'll be dropped a yard or two shy of the 30. 
Another nice gain, 13 yards that time, and another first down. That looked like a pretty good route combination there because you've got to find a way to clear the guy running the drag because when you do, you can just put the ball on him and then let him run. Yeah, he's got some space. Two and now on first down. Throwing the out route incomplete. That's Grant. He's going to go out of bounds, but he takes this one down just shy of the 20. Ten more there and another first down. Dolphins. Two and a throw again. Buying time to his left. He'll get eight on the scramble there. It'll be second and a couple. Now, that was not a bad scramble there on first down. He didn't force it, nor did he throw it away. He was able to take off, and now he made it a very manageable second and short. Ahead of the chains now, second and two. Now a play fake. Here's Tonga Bailoa. That's going to be caught at the 10-yard line. And the Dolphins are going to have a first and goal as the tackle made at the 10-yard line. Two of finding Gesicki there for a Dolphin first. When an offense reads blitz, doesn't matter where it's coming from, tight ends know that they become a big part of the passing game because they should be an easy outlet when all those extra bodies are trying to get to the quarterback. A hot route, so to speak. They'll try and run for it on first and goal. And that didn't fool anybody. He's going to be dropped in the backfield. Now that sends him two yards in the wrong direction and leads to second down. When a draw works, it can be a thing of beauty. But when it doesn't, oh, it can be ugly. And in this case, loss of yardage ugly. So they get pushed back to the 11. And here's second and goal. Here's Gaskin. And he's going to be brought down just shy of the five at the six. They get five on the run, but it leaves him with a tough third and goal forthcoming. But you've got to give kudos to your offensive line and the guy carrying the ball because they were in a second and long situation. It seemed pretty dire, but they brought it back to third and manageable with that run. A lot of tired bodies on that field, but this is a big play, third and goal. And he is going to go down back at the 11-yard line. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. The kick by Sanders is good. And the Dolphins have tied things up here in the fourth. This hasn't exactly been a battle of one touchdown after the other, quite the opposite. But at 3-3 now here in the fourth, it's been an entertaining game considering just two field goals. Yeah, is it really a football game now or are we watching baseball? This feels like a pitcher's <laughs> duel, doesn't it? Nice and tense on the edge of your seat. Have you been scoring this one? A lot of, a lot of strikeouts and ground balls in this one. Field goal is all we've had so far. 3-3 now as the kick is away. Fielded a couple yards into the end zone. And that decision to bring it out ends up not being a good one. Cost him about five yards as he's tackled it to 20. New England trying to get a place on offense. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now with the game this close, you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. Flush to his right. from the 27 now. Here's second and three. Watch, watch 
Here's Newton. He'll find his tight end here, Asi Asi. And he's able to get out to the 32, brought down there. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. This is where, of course, it's good to have a veteran quarterback under center. You would just be able to put out one of those blood pressure clips, and nothing would be different for him. He's done it many times before, expects to get it accomplished again. Now Newton. He'll get this underneath to Michelle. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. That's good. That goes as a gain of 11 and a Patriot first down. Obviously a big first down right there. Yeah, they still got a hustle. They got to get up to the line of scrimmage and get set. But I don't think necessarily you need to spike it. But they've got to continue to move quickly. First down now, but that clock rolling. And he can't get a throw away. He's taken down. And we talk about players blitzing all the time. The tackle man. I often tackle laugh and sometimes call it just straight ahead pursuit. What a running start right back to the backfield for him. Yeah, it really didn't give anybody a chance to get up there and stop him. No, I mean, that's really, really difficult. You're asking a whole lot anyway. But when he gets that kind of a start and comes through clean, oftentimes the advantage definitely goes to the defensive player. And a six-yard gain gets him right around the 43. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. I don't know that those medium five-ish yard gains are going to do it right now. Probably should have dropped it, right? Yeah, that way you save more time on the clock. But I know receivers, they think they can catch it and break a tackle and turn it into a big gain. They wound up getting nothing out of that second down completion. So now here's third and ten. Newton to throw. He completes it right side to White. Now the Dolphins going to burn the first of their timeouts as he'll stop it with 27 seconds showing on the clock. The Patriots send out their punter as he'll kick it away for the second time. And that hits at the six and carries into the end zone for a touchback. And out come the Dolphins now. They have a little bit of time here to get into field goal range. Not much. In a tie game, you don't want to do anything crazy, right? I agree with you on that one. Risk-reward, okay? If you go for it, what is the absolute reward on this? But the risk is probably greater. Run the clock out, get to overtime, and try and win it there. All right, we'll see if they do just that. And they're able to get this one across the 35. The Dolphins going to take their second timeout as it'll come with 15 seconds to play in the ball game. Out comes the Miami offensive unit. Now they get set to take over. Their defense has done the job. Now it's the offense's turn as they've got it first and 10. To throw is Tua. Quick hitter here, it's complete. And a six-yard gain gets him right around the 43. Vailoa's pass complete to Jaquim Grant. A six-yard pickup brings up second. And we've got free football. Four quarters done, and we're dead even. We'll have overtime after this timeout. It's a little teaching moment here. Overtime rules. Remind us how this goes, partner. Okay, so in the past, we had sudden death. First team to score wins, but no longer. Now, if the team receives the ball, scores a touchdown, they win the game. If they kick a field goal, though, or don't score, the other team gets a possession. And after both teams get a possession, then we're into sudden death. First team to score wins the game. That'll be taken about a yard deep. And he won't quite make it to the 25. Out comes the New England offense to see what they can do this time. And hoping to do better than they did their last possession when they punted the football. Appeal to the vanity of your offensive line. Tell them that they control your fate. Leverage guys. Win the line of scrimmage. If you do that, you start to win first down. You win second down. And guess what? You start accumulating first downs. And that's what they need in order to not pump the ball again. On well, first down, it's Newton. Open man is Asi Asi, the tight end. And he's brought down, getting this one up to about the 35. 
A gain of 11 to kick off the drive, and it's a quick first down. Partners, a lot of fun watching the NFL now, isn't it? Because when the big fellow runs routes, it used to be when we were kids, he'd run about three different routes, and that was it. Now he can run anything and catch the balls we just saw there. On first down. It's White, and he'll get this one up to about the 39 here. He's brought down. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. Brandon, we just saw the benefits of being able to run the ball successfully. They pick up four yards on that carry. So now, if you're a play caller, you could do just about anything you want, but on the defensive side of the ball, you scramble a little bit. Now you're behind trying to figure out, do I need to blitz him? Do I need to pressure him? How do I gain an advantage on this snap? And that is incomplete. A lot of force bearing down on him there. He could not hang on. It's third down. Another nice job there defensively. They've really stymied their passing attempts, and it continues in overtime. And for them to do that, that means they've had to be cohesive on defense. Pressure in the quarterback's face. Good coverage of not just the, the wide receivers, but the tight end, the running backs when they try and slip out, and making sure they're at the point of attack. When the ball's in the air, they get there and help force some of those incompletions. They'll get this into the hands of Bird. That third down conversion, good for 23. He did not have a catch till that moment. Pretty good time for his first one, though, here in OT. I would agree with that. And just think about how they had to cycle through all the play sheets, right? Tried to find ways to get a lot of people the football. In this case, as you said, he hadn't had a catch all game. Now they find him in a key moment. Really well done. He's going to look deep for Edelman. It's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. He was looking for Julian Edelman that time. But it'll be second down. I'm going to need some help with this one. How did he miss it? Wide open in the end zone. He's not hurried. He's not hit. And somehow, incomplete? Yeah. What happened? During film study, that's one where he's just going to shake his head, not be able to believe it. Six points go by the wayside on that one. And his pass incomplete. Let's phrase this delicately, okay? Might have had a better option instead of throwing the football into double coverage. He was blanketed. I was surprised that he went his direction. Yeah, should have thought maybe about the check down, take the completion, keep moving. In need of a third and ten conversion to keep this opening drive of OT alive. Again, Newton. And that is incomplete. Oh, he had a defender right there with him to force that to the ground. And fourth down now coming up. From a defensive perspective, they had exactly what you want anytime they want to throw the football. There was pressure on the quarterback. They were getting after him, and they tightened down on the receivers and forced the incompletion. The Patriots send out their punter as he'll come on to kick this one away. That one sails out of bounds. A side judge will walk it off. And he says it went out of bounds at the nine-yard line. Nice punt. Miami set to take over. Gaskin and he's up past the 10 to about the 12. Miles Gaskin. They give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. But we all know the guy carrying the ball is going to get the credit both in the stat line and probably in the newspaper. But guess what? Those guys creating holes, they couldn't feel better about themselves right now. Offensive line, tight end, probably even the wide receivers are involved. They're moving the ball well. All right, what can Tua do now with his drive at OT? And they're able to bring him down at the 20. Seven yards there and a first down. Charles, you get into these overtime situations, that's not a bad guy to dial into. Well, when you have to have plays, especially in a spot as you just described, we're in OT, you've got to go to the guys you can trust and you know are going to make the plays. Well, they say it's not the X's and the O's, it's the Jimmy's and the Joe's. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. Devontae Parker was the intended receiver. And it's second down. I think he's got to be careful not to force anything into coverage right there. There weren't really any throwing lanes, but the best part for him, he's got second and third down to fall back on. 
After the incompletion, here's second and 10 from the 20. On the handoff, it's Gaskin. And he'll have the Dolphins first down as he gets this up past the 30. He's obviously a bit of a shorter running back. Sometimes when he goes up the middle like that, he, he gets lost in there, and then he pops out for 10, 20 yards. I actually asked NFL linebackers if that was true. Do you actually lose sight of some of the smaller running backs? And all of them confirmed that that can be a problem. Think of it this way. Two of the top running backs in NFL history, Emmitt Smith, Barry Sanders, both 5'10". And that time almost intercepted. That would have changed things here in overtime, but instead, second down. Out of the shotgun, Breda. And he'll get this up only to about the 33. They do get a couple, but they'll be left staring at a third and eight coming up. Pretty good little two-play sequence there. You force the incompletion, then a very short pickup. Yeah, now maybe you bring in an extra defensive back or two because you want to try and defend on third down. They like to play those nickel or sub packages, don't they? Throwing his tongue of Iloa on third down here. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. And he is going to have the Dolphins first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Two and a Parker there for the Miami first. Here's Tonga Bailoa on first and ten. Throwing over the middle, and it's incomplete. Keeping the aggression going on defense in overtime here, a first down blitz. You know you can get burned on it big time if they pick it up, but in this situation, they brought the blitz, put some pressure on the QB, and he wasn't able to complete a pass downfield. Here now is second and ten, again from the 41. Tug of Iloa working out of the gun. That's caught by the Notre Dame man. It's Durham Smythe. Now another timeout called for by the offense. They'll be left with just one remaining here at OT. Here comes play number nine now as they come up on a third and three. Again, they will throw it with Tungabailoa. He's going to air one out, and that is incomplete. Love the idea, love the concept, but you got to leave a little room on the sideline so he can fade into it when he makes the catch. That was thrown too close to it for the receiver to make a play. Here's Matt Hawk now, as he's on a punt for the first time this afternoon. Not too shabby here. This will skip out of bounds at about the 12-yard line. The Patriots offense now. They work their way back onto the field. Now, if you're a fan of punting, and I know that not many people are, but this game kind of turning into one for you. Well, it's okay if it's a skills contest, right? We're really into it then, but not during the course of an actual game. This has turned into a field position game, though. Sometimes a better punter may actually determine the outcome. Well, the drive starts with a completion, left side. Now another timeout called for by the offense. They'll be down to just one remaining as we step aside here in overtime. New England trotting into place on offense. Neither team scored yet. Now we go to sudden death. Next points win this game. How about the tension right now? It is ratcheted up, isn't it? I mean, now whatever happens, points are scored. That's your ball game. Can't wait to see the defense now. Do they get a little more aggressive in order to not let the team just drive the ball easily down the field? Gotta be careful. Rush coming, and he's taken down. Man, he got in there so quickly, Charles. What could the offense have done to adjust and account for that? But what you're hoping is that you figure out and you see and get a clue that maybe there's going to be some pressure coming at you, and you change the blocking schemes. Maybe you go to max protection. The biggest one is maybe you bring your running back in to try and keep you clean. But in that case, that didn't happen. Zero accountability, and a sack resulted. That's incomplete, but there is a flag down. So hang on. A big call coming on third down. Thought they were going to force a fourth down. Instead, P.I. gives him the first. 
and that's frustrating because you think you've taken them really deep into the count, haven't you? Instead, you've got to start all over. That can really, really be demoralizing. The big play has them all the way out near midfield for a first and ten. Throwing is Newton. He's going to try and go deep again. And this one is incomplete. Newton's pass incomplete. Intended for Demir Bird. Brings up second and ten. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. To throw again. Newton looking for Harry. He airs it out deep. And that will be incomplete. Trying to dial up the long way way out there, but it'll be third down. One overtime. How about two? We need another. We're still even. We'll switch sides and have that second overtime in just a moment. Now they face a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions. From the gun, here's Newton. And that's going to be incomplete. The contact there enough to jar that ball free. And it brings up fourth down. He did a fine job there of not hitting him before the ball arrived. And I've got to tell you, you can often mistime that play because of the angles of approach. When you're going to get him, sometimes you panic as well and think, I've got to be there right now. Instead, in this case, timed it perfectly and knocked it free. And no return possible here as they angle this one out of bounds. The Dolphins' offense now heads back on the field. And last time out, they had to punt the football away. Anything positive possibly to take from that? There always is when, when you're punting the ball, ball away. It doesn't sound like it because you're giving it up. But you've avoided a mistake. At least you didn't turn it you over. You didn't right turn else. it over. Right? You're giving, it, you're giving your defense a chance because you're punting the ball away and they're set to go on the field as opposed to sudden change after a turnover. Wow, now we've got to go out there and stop people. So, yeah, there's always something bods to be gained from it. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. First play of the drive. Let's give credit all around. Excellent blocking, but a guy carrying the ball, he was the finisher. A really nice run. On second down, Tua. That's complete to his tight end, Mike Gesicki. And he'll get it up to the 33-yard line. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. Many different ways to create space, but on that play, he did it with that big, wide body of his. Didn't get a whole lot of yardage on the play, but it did what it was supposed to, pick up a first down. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. Running out of the gun here, Brita. And he'll work this one up to about the 38. The ball carrier. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. That's a really good gain right there. They pick up five yards halfway to a first down. The only problem now in the huddle, everyone's going to want to touch the football. Be a lot of chattering now because they've seen that they can move the line of scrimmage. And he'll give it here to his running back. And he's dropped just before the line to gain. Four-yard pickup leaves him with third and one. On any running play that's called, they're always hoping that it's going to break big and go the distance. But when you get a nice gain like that, you're able to do so many things anyway. You can come back and run essentially the same play again, continue to move the ball on the ground, or you can decide to throw the ball now because usually you have the defense back on its heels. And he's got the first down as he's up to the 45-yard line. He was a third down gain of three yards, and that'll be enough. Well, someone's been having a good game so far, and you know something? A lot of has been power running. They decided to turn him loose again on third down, didn't they? They did indeed. He delivered the tough yards. So after two first downs, they get another here. First and ten at the 45. Tua going to hand this one to Brita. And he'll take it across the 50 and into New England territory. He's there to stop him, Juwan Bentley. Nice satisfying run on first down for the offense, picking up five, which means defensively, the thought process is entirely different. You don't want to panic, but at the same time, you're saying to each other, we've got to tighten this down. We can't give up gains like that. From the shotgun now, here's an inside give. 
And he's dropped just before the line to gain. Four-yard pickup leaves him with third and one. If you're a football guy, that's a pretty run because everyone is in sync right there. Obviously, the guy carrying the ball, but how about the people up front? Leverage, athleticism, they created some nice space for him. This will be play number seven on the drive. Third and a yard. time to the tailback and he will have first down yardage as he's brought down at the 41 the gain of four that time as the drive continues on third down that's a good job of situational football and understanding where the first down marker was and getting there they fake the handoff now to it Throwing left side, it's complete. And he's going to get this inside the 30. Give him 12 yards there, and the Dolphins have a first down. This is a big spot for a rookie QB, and overtime's kind of where you earn your stripes, isn't it? It really is, and we've talked with enough coaches and players about how these youngsters are getting into the game and playing this at such a high level so early. But overtime, that's an entirely different animal, and he's handling it well. They're starting to put together a nice drive. Might have gotten this one down to the 28, and that's all. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Yeah, things were pretty stacked up there in the middle of the line. A lot of bodies, not much space. I think ultimately, he was fortunate to get anything out of that run. The run only got a yard. Here's second and nine. Now a handoff here to his running back. And he'll go down here right around the 23-yard line. Call it a gain of five that time, and they'll be left with a third and about four. And I know you, with every carry, especially in overtime, you're just saying, if you're that ball carrier, hold on to the football. Hold on to it, protect it, but not necessarily settling because you're trying to get to the end zone. You're trying to end the game right here. And I know the defensive guys poking, clawing, raking, trying to knock the ball free and protect their end zone. Yeah, like you alluded to, especially this part of the field. So it all rests now on the right foot of Jason Sanders. And play is stopped here. Timeout. It's the defense calling the timeout here. That's their second and last timeout here in the overtime session. We'll be back. So it all rests now on the right foot of Jason Sanders. This to win it in overtime. And he got it. The kick is good in overtime. He's able to split the uprights. We were just treated to an absolute dandy in this one. A great finish in overtime with a long field goal. Everybody, including us, on the edge of their seats. Quite a game and it's rare that you get a game into overtime, that it doesn't turn out to be a dandy, right? That's what we saw here. And just what you were talking about, a long field goal to win it. So definitely not a gimme. So there was tension all the way through until the ball went through the post. But it did go through the post. Ice water was in his veins. So that'll do it for us, for my partner, Charles Davis, and all the hardworking men and women on our crew. I'm Brandon Gaunt. You've been watching the NFL right here on EA Sports. And with that, we say so long from Foxborough.